uh, let me clarify that the focus of this policy that's been drafted is food preparation establishments. So <coughs> if you're in the food processing business, if you're a restaurant, um, that's the type of use that this is specifically um, geared to apply to. And then others that were problematic would, we would have to deal with, but but the, the intent isn't to be looking at single family homes uh, or even apartment homes uh, for this type of requirement unless there's an evident, evident problem at those locations, in which case even today we'd be going to them and say, look, this, this is a problem and we need to deal with it, you know, even, even without this, this policy in place. Um, I think we need to close this workshop and get into our um, regularly scheduled meeting. What I'm I'm uh, okay, go ahead. Um, what, I, what I'd suggest, uh, Charlie, is maybe you could forward me on some of your questions and any other questions other trustees would have, and I can um, kind of tabulate them and try to answer them and move this move this along, and then maybe in a month or two or three, whatever the t how it ever unfolds, come back to the board with, and addressing those questions. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to ask the board to do <coughs> would be to forward directly to uh, the superintendent any questions, whether they're uh, directly related to the text or whether they're policy questions that you have. If you could just um, forward those on to the superintendent. What I would do myself is I, I have I've marked up uh, comments on a copy of the document that he sent us. So I'll provide him with a copy of those with my comments marked up on there, plus a list of the questions that I took from those and just said, okay, these, these are the general questions that these comments allude to. I'll forward those to him, and if you all could do the same thing, um, then he'll have something to work with to try and coalesce and, and uh, give him some specific um, um, issues that he can try to address and and feedback to us, and then we'll schedule a, a subsequent workshop when he's made sense out of all of our questions and issues. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, well then with that, I will close this workshop meeting, and uh, we'll, we'll take five minutes, and then we'll, I'll convene our uh, regularly scheduled meeting.
Fine. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees for July 27, 2017. First item, uh, second item is the roll call. Joe Carroll. Present. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Rob McSorley. I'm here. Nick Rico. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Um, next item is approval of the minutes of June 22nd, 2017, our regular monthly meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any corrections or um, additions to be offered? I have two on page six. Um, in the third paragraph, um, I would uh, delete admiral and replace it w with admirable. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, on, the, on the following line uh, where it says instruction at Jesse, Jesse training seminars um, should state that is a feather in the district's cap. And then I think the sentence makes sense. All those in favor of okay. the... I'm Same sorry. one that Charlie got. Oh, okay. Admirable. Admirable. Okay. All those in favor of uh, the minutes... Do you anyone oppose? Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. One abstention. Two. 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 Is that two abstentions? I wasn't here either. So five in favor, none opposed, two abstentions. <coughs> the abstentions are because they were not present at the meeting. All right. Uh, Superintendent operations report. Okay. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of June is included in your packet. Our average up home flow for the month was 1.42 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was again well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% BOD removal and 97% CSS removal for monthly averages of 16 and 10 milligrams per liter, respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of June is included in your packet. No issues were noted. Uh, we have started sludge hauling from the plant. Uh, our first trailer dump has been uh, filled, removed, and replaced with no issues. Actually, we've had, I think, three or four at this point. Uh, the first, uh, the, the target is 28 to 32 tons, and we um, filled it with 29.5. And our highest to date is actually 32.3 tons. So uh, we're doing pretty good on uh, getting right where we need to be. Uh, the first trailer, we were only de able to dewater for four days. Um, but uh, the, the last three have all been five-day runs. On July uh, 7th, Ryan McClure. Uh, before you go on, uh, just, just uh, have you noticed any... Uh, Changes in the uh, general environment of the plant with regard to odor? Um. It, it's tough to say right now because we still have compost on site mm -hmm. and okay. we're still hauling it. Okay, so if you could just try to monitor that. Yep. Oh, I definitely site. am. So major point of curiosity um, as to how that may change. Uh, on July 7th, uh, Ryan McClure of 3 Iris Drive called with an odor complaint and returned his call and spoke with him directly, providing him with the district's efforts uh, with regard to interim mitigation efforts as well as what the district is doing for long-term solutions. This is down in the uh, pump station 2 or the, the pump station that's located right on the Eastern Trail on Pine Point. Um, prior to receiving his call, we, uh, I had already noted an odor in the area and had a, uh, the carbon changed on the temporary filter that we had installed. And uh, so we, we've actually, at the time we were doing it twice a week, we're actually now doing it, have even increased it to, to three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, we received the results of our May 17th fire department inspection at the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, we had no violations. 
Uh, Carl installed the secondary level control system at the river pump station. The system takes control of the pumps upon failure of the primary control system. The budget of VFDs have arrived. Carl and Paul uh, will start installing them um, this coming month. Paul is installing additional lighting on the camera trailer to facilitate nighttime use of that trailer. We were called about a potential sewer plug on Avenue 4. It ended up being a sewer service that was plugged. The plug was cleared by the plumbers. After they cleared the service, the di di district did jet and TV the main line on Avenue 4 um, as a result of the plug being moved down into our line. <laughs> um, the aeration tank duty blower has arrived. This is a budgeted item. Carl and Paul have actually started installing it. Um, that was, it's actually now out of the garage in, in, in the blower building. And the uh, carbon for the odor control units for station 6 and 11, Old Neck Road and Old County Road, uh, that has been changed uh, in, in preparation for the warmer season. Uh, the town of Scarborough launched a new mobile reporting tool. It's called the Scarborough Fix-It app. Um, it allows residents to report and track non-emergency issues directly and through the town departments. Um, I was approached by the town about uh, joining uh, all this. I'm currently reviewing the application with regard to potential <coughs> district participation. Uh, this past month, we completed some landscape modifications at the front of the administration building. I, I provide you with some pictures of it. Uh, Knowles has finished the painting of the uh, coal-fired farms pump station. Um, they, we actually had them level the floor. The floor actually was pitched in the wrong way, so away from the sump. So now any water in the pump station will actually flow to the sump. And on the Secondary clarifier number one, uh, the budgeted sandblasting and coating of this equipment is underway. As they prepared the tank for sandblasting, it was noted that the effluent baffle had degraded beyond repair. Um, we have reached out to the manufacturer to obtain a cost and delivery information for the replacement of these baffles. The added cost for one clarifier is approximately $8,000 for the materials alone. The budgeted cost for the coating was approximately $32,000 per clarifier. Uh, to manage the cost, um, my plan moving forward is to purchase enough materials for the two clarifiers, install the materials within clarifier number one, which is now the, the coating is complete, and defer the painting for clarifier number two until 2018. Um, there's no, there's no uh, crisis to that requiring us to get that painted at this point. So, uh, The odor control unit, the Eco-2 soup oxygenation cone has arrived. We are currently working on the site layout. We anticipate installation this fall. And on July 7th, uh, Chris DeCourcy of New England Environmental performed the startup of the Penn Valley pumps that the district installed. Uh, the startup went well, although it was noted that one of the motors sounds different from the others, which Penn Valley is looking into, and one of the high-pressure cutout switches was not working, which Carl feels is due to a bad time delay within the VFD, which actually he has since ordered and uh, uh, will be replacing uh, shortly. And that is what I have for my operations report. Questions to the superintendent? Um, the river pump station uh, secondary control system that Carl installed, that was a follow-up from the failure that we had uh, a month or so ago when the... Uh, At the station itself? Yeah. Um, the no. It's something that we've been uh, actually... Um, we budgeted for and have been planning for installing secondary controls at all of our pump stations such that if the primary control fails, uh, the on-call operator can, will go out, assess the situation, and is able to either switch over or it automatically switches mm -hmm. over to the secondary control. Yeah, it's, I think what I'm thinking of is the is, uh, pump station at Pine Point that we had the problem with uh, Most last recently. month, not yeah. the river pump station. Yeah. Um, is this um, a similar scenario where at the 
at the other pump station, the, the remedy was to get away from the ball float system as the backup system for that. Yeah, in this case here, it is a, uh, I think we're using what's called, uh, oddly enough, a fog rod. Um, you know, every station is kind of unique and the, the right, we, it's, it's, it takes time to figure out the right application of the right mm -hmm, technology. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. That's that was the only question that I had. Right. Okay. Next item uh, on the agenda is correspondence. We have two items of correspondence. Dave, take over. Main DEP facility inspection report um, dated May 26, 2017. As noted in, at our last meeting, Matt Height conducted an inspection of the. District's treatment facilities on Black Point Road attaches a copy of his report. Uh, as noted under his observations, Matt Road operation and maintenance at the facility are excellent overall. The second item for correspondence uh, is a, a new item that came. Uh, it, it's our main DEP discharge incident report for July 18th of uh, 2017. On the e evening of July 18th, we had a sanitary sewer overflow into the house at 7 Avenue 7. The cause of the failure of both, um, the cause was a failure of both the primary and secondary level control system. The primary control system is an ultrasonic that froze uh, electronically, and the secondary system is a float switch. As the water level rose, the float switch got hung up on a chunk of grease which prevented it from tilting and activating the pumps. We had the pumps running within an hour and 15 minutes uh, fr from receiving the call and the station fully functional by 2 a.m. A copy of my report to DEP was included in your packet. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Question for you. At what point does our system notify us there is a problem? Is it when the first system fails or when both system fails? Uh, actually, when uh, we have several um, things that will uh, notify the, the plant, um, <clears throat> if the primary control system is functioning appropriately and the first pump uh, either can't keep up with the flow or as a result of a plug or a partial plug um, doesn't pump at all, um, there is a high water, high water alarm that actually will go off before the second pump. The, the primary control system will activate. We have the high water pump. alarm below the second pump yep. level. And then um, if the primary system in this case here, as in this case here, froze electronically and um, the, the secondary system would come on that would run the pump and also send an alarm. What point does the secondary What's that? What, uh, what point is the secondary trigger? Elevation-wise? Yeah, relative to your alarm and your... It's, it's above the high water alarm and the second pump on alarm. Both of those? Yeah. above both of those? Yeah. Interesting to know we had a grease problem here? Yes. So I had a question. <clears throat> so on the house that the overflow occurred in, we... We're taking care of that with our insurance, or yeah, that's working through our the, the various insurance companies. Yeah. Okay, they were notified uh, the very next day, um, and uh, the, the whole thing's being dealt with. They've already sent out a uh, uh, well, actually, uh, within a couple of days, they had a um, an assessor out there looking at the, the damage. Yeah. So, so okay. I'm sorry, I, I you can contact you the homeowner, and they're happy. Well. Happy, but <laughs> they're they're satisfied with the fix, I guess, is what. Her, yeah, their solution. the last conversation I had with them, they, they were very pleased that the insurance company was notified as quickly as they were. Uh, were, were not surprised by their call to them. Um, so, yeah. so there was no high water alarm sent because the primary operating system had failed. Yeah. So is there a systematic problem there with regard to 
notice to the on-call operators with regard to that type of a failure? Uh, yeah, and we've, you know, one of the, um, if you noted in the uh, DEP report, they always, one of the things that they ask is, what is the plan to help prevent this from happening again? And um, like with anything, you want to walk away learning something. Um, and actually that night leaving, I was, I was thinking about it. And there's a manhole just outside of the, uh, the wet well that normally obviously just is dry and uh, functions as, as a wet well. There's water in the invert, so there's no grease buildup within that manhole. So we have actually have already installed a high water float within that wet well independent of the uh, other controls that will send out an, an alarm that uh, should not be impacted by grease even when, uh, even if the system uh, failed as a result mm -hmm. of grease within the wet well. Because the so what's the te telemetry from that alarm to the plant? That is radio. And that's sec at the secondary control elevation in the manhole. What's that? That is no. This is at an upstream. This is in an upstream, different location. It's an upstream manhole outside of. I understand. Yeah. The, the elevation, though, is it the same as the secondary float in the oh, control you. structure, or is it a little bit above that? It's a little bit above that. It, that it, we set it. I told the operator, uh, the mechanic, to set it at the crown of the the outlet pipe of the manhole. And where does that put us in relationship to where we're, how far are we into in the, the main station? I'd have to look at that. Is it like five more feet? or? Is it oh, no, it, uh, it's, it's probably within a foot of the, oh, okay. the other, other, other things. And that's a very deep manhole. That manhole is 17 feet deep uh, to that invert. Um, hmm. And when we had this event where it overflowed into Avenue 7, it had completely surcharged that manhole was and was within the foot and a half of the manhole cover. So there's a lot of storage in that line before you actually get a an overflow. So this would give us plenty of time <coughs> to respond. Is there a drastic difference in elevation of manhole cover and pump station cover? No. So they're pretty close. They're within 25 feet of one another. No, not horizontal distance elevation. No. No. Okay. They're within inches. <clears throat> and one thing I'm actually considering is uh, an independent uh, system um, that it w could operate completely separate from the pump station and send out uh, alarms via text. Uh, mission makes one. Uh, Mission Controls is what uh, the name of the company, and they run on floats. The system runs off a of, of battery, um, and uh, it it would se send a text, a normal text message. So it can send the text to our our SCADA system, and the SCADA system could then send the alarm and or uh, send text directly to. And the thought was have it send uh, directly to Glenn, Carl, and I, and one of us uh, would certainly be. Uh, all of us would be responding to it, so that's the other other thing that I'm, I'm considering. Something completely separate from the independent from the pump station. Would that be for all the stations, not just this one? Uh, at this point, no. Um, you know, there that that system comes with a cost. I mean, there is, a, uh, I think, you're looking at approximately about two thousand dollars. I think one of the things I, I will be starting to look at more is putting a high water float um, in in a manhole just outside of the, the pump stations. I think that's a good idea, uh, something that is j just doesn't have an opportunity to get hung up on grease. Um, you know, in time I, am, I may end up installing them in all of them. Go ahead. Would that be mainly for like our primary stations? That serves commercial type of establishments, yeah. Yeah. rather than not the smaller stations that are purely residential. Yeah. That would be uh, that would be my first, you know, installation. Yeah, I think I think if we're going to go that route, 
prioritizing along that line would be the way to go, and maybe and maybe the plan to do several stations a year until we get until we get them all done would be a reasonable precaution. To <coughs> um, yeah, I mean the stars were aligned for both systems not to alarm, but uh, to have a independent tertiary system. Yeah, I mean, idea. everybody, I think everybody wrestles with the redundancy issue and how many redundant systems are enough systems, and someday all three systems would go up. You know. Absolutely. Murphy's Law will prevail. Okay, let's move on then to uh, old business. Uh, well, it's not. There is no old business. Let's move on to new business. Mr. Chairman, before we take up this issue, may I recuse myself from this item since... Uh, I do uh, have a direct connection with the applicant. Sure. Thank you. Um, so without objection, Rob McSorley will be uh, recused from discussions on this item. Dunstan Crossing, townhouse residential units on Sherman Circle. Dave. On behalf of Dunstan Properties, LLC, Sebago Technics requested that the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees allow the district to accept the sanitary sewer flows from the proposed Dunstan Village Townhouse Residential Units located on Sherman Circle off of Stewart Drive. As you will recall, the district has been involved with the Dunstan Crossing subdivision since the original approval of the 264 residential development off Broad Touring Road in Route 1 in 2006. The first three phases of the development have been constructed, including a gravity sewer and sewer system within the, the project and a section of Broad Turn Road to the pump station construction constructed by the applicant on Broad Turn Road, uh, and it, which was conveyed to the district. The fourth phase was recently approved and is currently under construction. The proposed development consists of developing the lot adjacent to US Route 1 and Stewart Drive, as shown on the site plan. The project will include the development of four townhouses, each consisting of three residential dwelling units for a total of 12 units. The proposed sanitary sewer service consists of 263 of eight inch gravity sewer, one terminus manhole, and 350 feet of six inch sewer service within Sherman Circle, which <coughs> will remain a, pr a private way. The proposed gravity sewer, manhole, and sewer services shall remain privately owned. I recommend the approval with the following condition. The, the project outside the original service area, all 12 residential units are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This uh, fee is based on a single family residential dwelling unit without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and fees. The current capacity reserve fee for home is $3,136.68 and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current ENR, the, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 12 dwelling units is $37,640.16. And this fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer, uh, sewer extension permit. Uh, the proposed project uh, discharges into private sewer system that shall remain private. And the operation and maintenance of the system shall be the responsibility of the owner owners. Provide a sewer easement associated agreement and other legal documentation authorizing the use of the private sewer and documentation shall be the responsibility of the oper operation and maintenance of the same. Uh, all sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire. Uh, final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permit. Sewer extension permit is required. The complete application associate fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the sewer extension work. And the sewer permit is required for each sewer service. And that application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no uh, site work shall be completed for each of the, for the, the uh, specific buildings. And then finally, the uh, professionally surveyed uh, electronic geo-reference CAD drawings. <coughs> and PDF of the CAD drawing and stamp paper copies be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the project as stated with all the provisions of the superintendent. Oh. Second. Is there a second? 
Joe. Second by Joe Carroll. Uh, questions by the trustees? I have one. There's an out parcel. Um, are these going to be condominiums or apartments? Do you know? Uh, there, I I asked that question, and right now the intent is to have them as apartments, but um, they are saying that in, it is likely at some point in time they may tra be transferred and change into condominiums. Okay, so um, there's an out parcel. Um, I, there's a parcel in this development that's apparently being marketed and not going to be developed by the developer. Building five as shown on the plan. Building planet. five. Yep. And that 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 building is dependent upon the sewer utilities installed by the developer at this point in time, correct? Correct. So has there been any kind of has there been any kind of easement to guarantee future access uh, to the sewer system by future owners of this system or do we simply wait until the transfer of ownership takes place and see that that gets deeded over? The, I have not received any easements uh, for for that uh, future building um, and uh, I guess that kind of was my intent with regards to the inquire uh, in, in item number three where I uh, reference the easements and rights of use. I didn't specifically call out Building Five, but I, in my mind, I was thinking of all of all five buildings, even though this is this consistent with the um, this approval is for the four. But I could I could uh, ask for the fifth building also. Well, I mean, I think it would be prudent to do that, um, which would at least then establish the intention that that property would be serviced. The, originally, the developer's plan were not clear to us as to who was going to develop on individual parcels, but I don't think any of us anticipated that parcels would be sold and developed by others mm -hmm. within the framework of how the project was presented to us. Certainly, that's a reasonable thing for a developer to do, but I guess I would just want to be sure that, that our understanding is correct that this property will be served by the district sewer system by means of the private system that runs in to service the balance of this piece. I mean, am I clear? You know, I'm, you, I, are you understanding me? You're clear to me. Okay. <laughs> so, so I would like to just include that provision to to be clear that 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 was your intent under the easement rights to use, so that Building Five will be included. Under those easement, under easement five. If that's the case, then I'm happy with these just the way they stand. They'll start to come to us once they build the building. Correct. Correct. This does not. Include building five would have to come to us. Correct. But if this were a condominium association, <coughs> the the owner, current owner, may not have an interest in the condominium association when lot five gets developed. So I just think it's imperative that that be clearly up front. established. It would behoove the developer anyway. I would think so. <laughs> Based on your question now, I'm wondering where where do we pick up the sewer? Where do we own on this? We own Stewart Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Stewart there. Drive will be a, a public road. It is not just yet. Okay. Uh, we will own uh, the sewer within the right of way of Stewart Drive. Okay. Does that include laterals within the right of way? Sewer laterals going so that... I think it's SMH1. <coughs> no, SMH2 leads to this new development. Mm -hmm. We would own the lateral that goes from SMH2 mm -hmm. to the edge of Stewart Drive or the yes. whole lateral. Just to the edge of Stewart Drive. And the only way to access that lateral upstream would be in a private manhole, which would be SMH28. Yes? Okay. Four. Or Stewart from Drive. SMH2 yeah, on Stewart Drive. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, approve based on the conditions recommended by the superintendent. If there's no more questions, all those in favor of the motion? None opposed, one abstention.
Okay, next item under new business is an executive session to discuss the potential lease of district property pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 4056C. We will be recessing to executive session and we will be coming back into session to complete the items on our agenda. I have a motion to recess to executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? None opposed. 7 0 for executive session.
Okay, I'm going to call the meeting back to order after having recess to executive session. Uh, the next item uh, under new business is the Verizon Wireless Lease Agreement. Dave? The um, Verizon Wireless has uh, approached us uh, uh, a while ago uh, about renting, or leasing rather, so, uh, a small parcel of land, uh, 75 by 75 square foot parcel of land um, up, uh, up near the treatment plant uh, fence, uh, just right at the entrance gate, just to the right of that. Uh, these, and they presented us with a, a lease agreement and we've been working uh, through our attorneys to negotiate this lease agreement. One of the last things that um, uh, that we had to um, come to uh, together on was uh, the environmental issues and, and uh, responsibility with regard to historical uh, issues that may, may or may not be there and who owns responsibility. And that has since been resolved. Um, and the lease has, uh, is now, has now been presented to the uh, trustees. And I recommend uh, approval of the lease and the memorandum of understanding for the lease agreement. Motion to approve, sir. Is there a second? Second. Um, I think the motion to approve should include the provision for the termination date to be a uh, provision to be incorporated into the lease and we authorize the superintendent to execute both the memorandum and the lease agreement itself upon the satisfactory inclusion of that. We to upon the termination in a uh, period of five years, correct? Yes. Uh, so amended? So amended my second. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so that, author that will authorize the superintendent to execute that lease agreement upon the inclusion of the termination date as, as was just discussed. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. It's unanimous. Um, was that on the amendment? That was on the motion as amended. As amended, okay. Yeah, that was a friendly amendment without objection, so I think we're good. Uh, next item is the budget summary. The uh, six month budget summary is included in the packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any questions or comments on the budget summary? I think we're still tracking in great shape. Um, all those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Uh, public comments. Uh, there are no members of the public here this evening. Uh, trustee comments. Aubrey? Yes, I wanted to thank, uh, first of all, the superintendent for drafting the fat, soil, and grease policy. I enjoyed the workshop earlier tonight and look forward to discussing that some more. Um, I wanted to also commend the district. It looks like some of the peak flow, the pump station peak flows, have really come down a lot. I know you guys have been spending a lot of time. Staff's been very involved in that. And again, appreciate that. Less stress on the infrastructure. And just in general, complimenting the staff again for the hard work they do every day. We have excellent staff and the, the trustees Thank appreciate you. that. Nick. Uh, I want to first thank Glenn Belfleur, Carl, and Phil at the plant for their tour today, for myself and my uh, mechanic at Will Sanitary District. Um, uh, second, I'd like to comment that the odors have been reduced since the composting has ceased. Uh, and third, I think the high water float in the upstream manhole is a great idea. Thank you. Ben. Uh, no comment tonight, thank you. Joe? Just like to thank the superintendent for his report and work uh, um, with the, uh, the staff and the continued efforts. Rob? I would like to echo the prior comments of the trustees. Uh, thank you, David, and thank you, staff. No comments. No, no comments. comments. Um, Thank you for persevering with Verizon and getting that uh, into a 
final resolution. I think everybody's getting quite impatient to finalize that, so I think it's, it's good to have that done. Uh, also, thanks to the staff for their continuing uh, high level of performance. Uh, I think uh, between the main DEP inspection report, Scarborough Fire Dep Department's inspection reports, it's obvious that uh, things continue to be done at a very high level uh, at our facilities, and I think that reflects well on our employees, on our superintendent, and on the trustees, so keep up the good work. And uh, my appreciation to our employees for their hard work and dedication. Thank you. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned.